Okay, so now we're moving into our fourth presenter from TCC, from Thailand. So please um, have a seat. Yuki, please um, get the people back in the room like that. Uh, okay, yes, please. Sorry. Hello, my name is Kriti from TCC. First of all, I would like to thank KYS for them for the invitation me to this intensive workshop for them. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that I have no uh, design background or engineering background. I'm from business and economics. Yeah, and now I'm working for GCDC, Thailand Kiki and Design Center. Today's topic is about four topic. Why TCC is happening, how TCC do their activity, and what TCC have done so far, so far, and then the ABC. Right, let's start. Why TCC is happening in the world in Thailand, let's say. Back in, back in, in 1997, Thailand has, <coughs> is the original country who made the crisis in terms of financial crisis. At that time, there are a lot of financial crisis start from Thailand and go to abroad, around the world. And then that is, together with, in let's say, five or seven years later, that is about Thai unique culture and sensitivity. In terms of culture, we have the, our unique culture, our unique heritage, for example. Then, our father has thinking that in order to survive the next millennium or whatever, and I have to change my set, change everything. They have to change the way do we are making our business, we are creating business. Previously, we based on focus more on the export oriented and labor intensity. In 2005, TCC happened. TCC is a Thai government organization that we have a specific purpose on design and creativity. The one of the most important purpose of us is how to enhance Thailand competitiveness by using design. And when we talk about the meaning of design later, this is why PCDC happened. We just happened in just five or four reasons. First one is the genius low shine. It is about the genius of place. How can Thailand generate our uh, education from our culture, our, our heritage, our Thai sensibility? The place of Thailand, how can we create the value from that? Next one is the relocation from this. And then we have uh, initiated the, the, the so called eco creative economy. How economy in terms of creativity, the business of creative, for so example, film, uh, advertising, for example, have value to the economy. And as well as the, the, the last two, how creativity and design, let us be said that. This is the logo of TCDC. Logo of TCDC is the, it is a reflect from our heritage, our culture. We have some idea of the surrounding material, how to make a packaging. We, in, in Thailand, I think, actually, uh, the father of, uh, of TCDC, we know that we, TCDC, Thailand, Thai people have the creativity inside, but we have hidden by something like a confident, uh, Get the confident that we have this call in the, when we are a child. How do CDC do? We just do only four things, direct, promote, and educate, and support. We try to initiate the policy in terms of business, innovation, creativity, design to our country. We try to promote value of design by exhibition, by making the uh, real case success, and educate people. At the time, in let's say five years, in the first five years of our organization, we focused on knowledge, economy, knowledge provider, and the, I'm not sure it will call unfortunately or not, because at the time when we talk about knowledge, we, we think about the library, library for inspiring many people, for the designer who, you should hold somewhere, don't hold the bottom. Uh, well, uh, try to inspire people, try to inspire business man or designer by using library or books as a resource. 
and we will show later with this, we will, will be the pain point later on. Another way is we try to educate people through the symposium, the meeting, international meeting, by inviting the, let's say, famous designer, famous businessman, businessman or famous speakers around the world to inspire all people. And then we also have some small workshop from abroad or our design studio or creative firm, creative studio from in Thailand. And that, yes, that is quite inspired people. Yeah, and we also support small business in terms of after they have some, uh, let's say, design product, they can show or buy product inside our organization. But the, the point is, hey, yeah, I, I have some inspiration. What's next? Then it's turned to our pain point, let's say, five years ago, that how we have to do next. Then we try to support the corporate as well in terms of how to indicate design or creativity or design process, thinking process into the existing product development, kind of that. This is an example that we try to how to change the company that in the manufacturing or agricultural community products to be more creative on to use design in their organization, maybe design process. Yeah, and what TTC has done so far, it is about creative. We try to do the project, let's say, campaign about the PAT economy. We think that for Thailand to survive the next, let's say, 20 years, we have to be more creative. And creative approach, creative thinking, kind of that. We try to make like an inspiration or awareness uh, in the city, in some city, for example, Chiang Mai. And we try to make the, some, some area to be more, as a, to be called creative district. It is a starting program. And we try to make the, so I'm not sure that is a correct one or not. It is about making the creative ecology, creative ecosystem in some area. So that this area will be the, uh, like a, a study for some place, some area, other area to be, to be a case success that, hey, if you want to promote your organization, your area, your district, you have to be more creative in, in which way, in some way. And we also do some quality of life. For example, we have done some design for social innovation. For example, in, let's say, 2012, in Thailand, there are a big flood, and we easily have went to the, the area that had flood, and we fly, we also feel work and help also see that we have a lot of problem. And this one is a, like a floating toilet, is the one that we, we try to use design process. Let's say design thinking, design process, in order to solve the problem of the society. And we also thinking that how can energy consumption or in, anything about energy can be used design process to help to make anything new or innovative ways. We also invest in the, the so-called solid design. It is like a system design as well, but they are more, quite more about go to in the service sector, quite more in the service sector. After that, we have some project based as well. We try to bring the service design or design process in terms of into the transportation, for example, the train station. We also work with the company the global company to how can they provide some information, some then some that of their experience in design process into the transportation. We also have a lot of project during the last two years. And then we also thinking at how about making some using design in the tourism as a service. As well we go to the uh, suburban, the community, the local people and we found a lot of problems as a pain point as well. The, the third one is we try to build it and support the PAT business. As mentioned, we have to we try to enhance the competitive of the of the Thailand by using design through the organization. And we think about how can we create a design as a partner as well, but we just start. We learn a lot of fail. Sometimes there are a lot of limitations about that. We also have a workshop of design thinking about how to transform business by using business plan and design together. And this might be the last one that I try to make the 
Mm-hmm. Program about how to make a key key business by using design and management to, to make more sustainable, not, uh, not as a workshop or a project based. Yeah, we try, in some we try to indicate our design to the organization or inspire people, and which day will be innovative as well in terms of workshop, is the pain point, and lesson we I have learned from the program. Ah, uh, this is uh, like a service. Our program, KT Business Program, provide to our target. It is about lecture, seminar, workshop, and project based. And I have some that sometimes the pain point comes from the vision, mission of the organization until to be the target or audience. I will go into detail like this. First, as mentioned in the first five years for, for our organization, we have changed some idea that yes, we have already inspired people and the people forget back to us that what's next? How can I do like that? How do I like how can I do that like this designer that come to our department that yes, it is our department and then after we have shipped some idea about inspiration to implementation, this is quite impact our organization that because at the first time we did not think about that. We just only think that hey let's inspire people and let and reach that they will know by themselves that hey you can innovate, you can design it's kind of that. It is about how to change organization from inspiring people organization to the implementation to make people know how and know what and know how. Yeah. And then after that the vision or direction change is also impact to organization change because when all organizations start from inspiring people, the the, the resource go at that way, and then we try to implement the design or innovative way, the all organization is not prepared for that change. So we have we are in the process of changing the organization as well. And then the program, as mentioned, sometimes the, the program we have to start from like a lecture, make some people know the import, importance of the workshop, and then bring them to the workshop, and if someone, some, some people or some organization want to go into detail, we go into the project based or have some consulting program, for example. Another pain point of TCDC is as you, if you have made, uh, noticed that our library is so cool, sometimes people think that we cannot reach this organization. It is our, our own problem in the, in the beginning as well. Mm-hmm. And then we have some problem about ourselves. People, not only people, I mean in Bangkok, people as well, but other people, uh, other people from up country, they did not know us. Even organizations like uh, the ministry or something, they did not know us. It is a problem, our problem also. And then we cannot reach our own target. We just bring some audience, this that I have mentioned. There is about problem about we would like to provide quality of the program on the quantitative program as well. I have, I have been pushed by my boss that make a lot of program, but I think if there are a lot of program, it not make any sense. It's, we, I would like to provide by myself, I would like to provide some quality more than quantity. And now there are also another problem from my, from my boss as well that, hey, let's make some design thinking workshop online. When I heard that, mm, how can we bring this the hands-on experience in the living workshop into the online? Can we make the like infographic or animation? This is too much investment or not? It's in my mind, but I have not yet rejected to my my boss. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Another point is individual engagement during, let's say, deep, before, during, after the workshop or the our program. It is about target audience or target an audience. As I mentioned, I t- we try to make or build the design entrepreneur, design entrepreneur, compared to technopreneur, some kind of that. But it is like a make some goal far away and try to make it happen. Yeah. And after life, after the program as well, can the mindset change, really change? I'm not sure. I have no idea how to evaluate or measure it. We are, I'm thinking about if we have some workshop, a very good workshop, as I have feedback from that workshop, 
it is really good feedback. But I have not no idea how to make sure that those guys, whether or not men or women, they follow the step or they apply the program uh, or the tool set or mindset they got from the workshop into their own job or their organization. I have no idea about that. Yeah. For okay, all the organizations to be improved, I think back here, back from Tokyo, let's say next week, I have to, let's say, like a left uh, consensus about what is the definition of design in our organization. Because there are a lot of organizations, eh, a lot of definition about that. And even some people who work in TT for 10 years from the beginning, they have the different definition of design as well. So for me, it is about Actually, I have no success memory. I just only it's a process to get it. But after I got attend this program, I think it is a systematic thinking, a systematic process to get it very well. Not only for people, but also the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the problem and more to improve about it is about because we would like to enhance our competitiveness. We have to train the trainer more. We, we don't want to uh, monopolize our organization as a pe as an organization of people to be uh, provide some creativity to our society. And as mentioned, it is about problem of online education. And one thing that I think it is quite have our effort back to, to improve is about development program or direct access to the company. Because I think if we have to wait for budget or something else, our country cannot be complete. Sometimes I have to go with, to run the program with different or some different approach or make have some connection with our friends, the people I know well, and then propose them that hey, there is some design process, design thinking process, systemic dictating to change the way you work. Are you interested in it or not? Is the, the way that I have time to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the last one is about evaluation and follow-up program. That actually, to be honest, I have no idea about that. Yeah.
University of Malaya, Malaysia. Um, actually representing my faculty, Faculty of Engineering. Uh, my background is Biomedical Engineering. My degree, my Master and my PhD all in Biomedical Engineering. So we are actually, like our faculty are uh, actually like you can say like the typical engineers type of thinking. Alright? So, yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, so um, in that picture you can see that our faculty was built in year 1962 and it has evolved in 2013, we have new buildings and keep having new buildings I think we don't have any more lands to build anything so, <laughs> so now yeah, it's kind of thick like that, alright? Okay, so yeah, I have to show these are the management people so at least I'm showing to you, these are my bosses. <laughs> Them. Okay. <laughs> okay, so okay, under our faculty, we have like five main streams, uh, five main department. We have biomedical engineering, we have chemical engineering, we have civil, electrical, and mechanical. Normally people would say the mechanical would be on top, but because I'm biomedical, I'll put biomedical on top. <laughs> So, okay, unless you don't know biomedical, we actually learn what mechanical and electrical people do. Okay? So, under these five departments, we have about 10 programs. So, I think I'm here to share what actually like we try to do in our faculty or, and what we found happens with regards to this innovation and entrepreneurship and design. Because I believe engineers, like the typical one, do understand design in more technical way rather than design design thinking as what we've learned in these three days workshops. Okay. So for example, we have one, we have tried, uh, it's still currently present, we have one bachelor degree, we were like, I think we've tried to do one program, so a bachelor degree for design and manufacturing, okay. we have one specific, it's, uh, it's part under the department of mechanical engineering. And then we also try to do some workshops on innovations. This is on a voluntary basis. And we also have taught courses in terms of like this is a compulsory taught courses. So every single student's undergraduate, I'm talking about undergraduates now. So every single undergraduate student are compulsory to take these courses. Alright? So, but what happened? Right? Yes, this is the truth and I'm telling the truth. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so, so this is what really happened. Only less than 20 students registered to enter that type of bachelor degree. Okay, this makes it so weird for us. Okay, and then on the workshop of <coughs> these innovation types, it's free. The student doesn't have to pay anything. And even the dean willingly to put a special letter recommendation and whatsoever, only one third of them actually turned out to that type of workshop. And thought courses, we just enrolled for the grades. Okay. So they didn't really like learn the, the actual knowledge in that entrepreneurship culture and so on and they didn't really implement it inside, inside their daily life and okay, in the future. So we were thinking why these things had happened. So we actually did some, I know that interview doesn't really make, uh, we didn't really get a correct answer but regardless, we did something. We tried to look for the answers, why? So we realized that our students, uh, this in, in my country's contact, okay, uh, I'm from, okay, my, my university, before that my university is located in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, alright, so it's in between Thailand and Indonesia, so if you went to Thailand, you can go past to us and then take a flight to Indonesia, so you can go three, this is three of us, <laughs> uh, except for Ahmedabad, so, <laughs> alright, okay, so, okay, uh, we are from Kuala Lumpur. Okay, so uh, okay, this is particularly maybe for Malaysian students. I don't know because I'm talking about uh, my contacts. Uh, okay, so these things that a uh, most big company or companies in Malaysia, they didn't really ask the engineer to innovate something new. They actually like what the this student when they go out is actually like manufacturing engine is is an engineering more type of job, analytical things, you know, doing some simulations find the optimal solution for this and that, okay? Like, see the plan, how, we say, for example, like petroleum engineering is like, whether the plants give a good performance about at the stage of like, you know, calculating things and do all the analytical stuff. So they didn't really see, why do they need a 
actually went into this path, traveling themselves to do some innovation, to do some entrepreneurship, and so on. Okay? So that's that's the two. We are like one is like so they thought the industry does not really offer this type of job, and it's kind of truth. Okay, not all industry have bad design engineers positions, and the second one is their mindset. They, do, they thought that innovation doesn't really have value for them. Okay, and the third, they thought they will also need a lot of money whenever they want to start uh, to become an entrepreneur. Okay. And of course, we have a multiple background or multiple cultures in Malaysia itself. We have Malay, Chinese, Indian, and so on. Okay, so most likely, for example, like if I'm talking about culture, the Malays tend to work for the government. Okay, and we have the Chinese do do some business, and the Indian also do some business, small medium industry business. All the little supermarkets, most of them are Indian and Pakistanis. Okay, you are right. That. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, is this coming from their background? Coming from the beginning. So, okay. So, at, so for the start, we took these three, three, four, like the industry, the mindset, the money, and from the beginning. That like, means like the background as I will start on how we can try to solve, not solving, at least improving our way of introducing innovative and entrepreneurship in, in our faculty. Okay. Then what we try to do, okay? So at the faculty level, first, we add a course. It's called a capstone design project for all the engineering students. Regardless of your background, you have to take these subjects, okay? This is a, it's a grading subject. It's a grade, okay? Then, uh, okay, then, uh, there's a certain process of it, from the beginning, from designing and so on, from the typings. Then at the end of the stage, we actually, like, call the industrious people, to actually look at our students' innovations and our students' design, right? Then the second one is like we try to promote to our students. This is on the voluntary <coughs> basis. We bring them to competitions. We say you don't have to pay. The faculty is good enough to pay for your fee. So okay, some of them are okay. We, for the sake of like going to another country or you know taking the flight, and so they they took part in the competition, which is fine. Okay, and then. In, in terms, and the faculty is very supportive, they do have like create uh, or improve the facilities and try to create an environment so that, that can innovate, that can make the students try to be more freely and so on. And we have uh, collaboration with other universities and industry in order for us, the teachers, the lecturers, to learn on how we actually can bring this idea of innovation and entrepreneurship into our faculty. And the fourth thing is like, we, we have this one challenge called the Begin Challenge. We organize this for the school students, not for our students. It's for the school students. We, say, we take students from around our area, we invite them to enter this type of like Begin Challenge. And then we have, for example, like we have another voluntary like conference, we call this Engineers, where the students or this um, undergraduate student can present their prototypes and their works during this conference. So we have five things at our faculty level. This is what we try to do. And then, okay, these are some pictures, okay, so on. Uh, this is the facilities. At the beginning, it only looked like this. Now, you can see, right? Okay, so now we have these three nice cubes, all right? So the faculty is actually investing lots of money for this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. And we have some collaborations from the international and local. Yeah, I put them. Yes, I put this one okay. So yeah, one of it is the key universities in order for us to learn. Um, we have like collaborations with industries and so on. And this is the beginning challenge where the students, this is school students, this is not our undergraduate. They come and present what they prototype, they try to talk to people what is the prototype. And this is our conference for our final year project student conference. Okay, it means like the students have to talk in front and think like what you have done here for the FSP, SFC students. Okay, then what we learn? Okay, this is what this is what happened. This is only okay. This is a short term thing. It's not that we just did it for maybe one or two years. Ago. It's not that uh, just it not does not happen like ten or twenty years ago. Okay? <coughs> All the activities I mentioned we, we did it for a couple of years ago. So the students what we, we realized that the students start talking and 
discussing about their idea with the industries. Because in third year, in the middle of third year, they will ask, they will go to this industrial training. It's like they're going to work for about three months at the industry. So they will be, as compared to before, where we did have all these type of activities, the students just do work for the company. Now they have the courage to actually like discuss their ideas. And now they were asking the company, what if, if we do the solution like this and so on, right? That's one thing. And the second thing is like when we show to the company or to the industries in Malaysia, okay, I'm talking the industries in Malaysia, about what our students can design and innovate, they will say, oh, then they will start. We are, we are, we are getting now, and even this year we are getting some, some, for example, like they were asking some to solve, they have some problems, and they say, okay, you can innovate the solution. They did, they, they did not dictate on how it's going to be solved. You can say, okay, you can suggest to us on what innovative way in order for us to solve this thing. So it's a, it's a different way of, now they're asking us in a different way. As previously, okay, you just solve this, I just want this, this, and that. So now they are asking about our opinion. They are asking for our students' opinion. So which is, we can see a positive improvement. And for the student, when they enter the competitions, uh, they, yeah, for the first year they didn't win, for the second year I think some of them win and the third year yeah, they, they, they are getting the winning things but it's not the winning that we're looking for we're looking at now the first year and second year students start talking ideas with the lecturers they say oh our senior can run to the competitions so we have this idea, can we do like this and that so we can be like our seniors, you can bring us like maybe to Singapore, to Korea to enter competitions so they start talking about the idea, okay? And then the school students, okay? When you see that during the, these pictures, I didn't really, we didn't really take pictures about what their prototype is. But we do, if you realize, is the students and the industry were talking. They were explaining about their prototype. So we are, we are actually trying to remove the barrier of these school students so we want to encourage it, saying that regardless of what you have designed, whether it's only a water bottle or whatever, it's good and you should you should be able, you should have the courage to tell other people what you are being prototyping with. Okay? So that's what we try that what is our objective with this type of challenge. Okay? So and then for the lecturers part, when we have the collaboration with other industries uh, and also with other universities, now the lecturers start to think. Oh, maybe I shouldn't only like proposing a project, only engineering project. Now what if it's maybe better if I propose a multidisciplinary project? For example, we have currently received like a couple of millions from our uh, the Ministry of Education. This is then the Ministry. Uh, this project is actually a multidisciplinary. It's involved engineers. It's involved involved teachers like from the educational faculty. It's involved the doctors. It's involved. Even the social science people, it is involved like a multidisciplinary. So they, they were not only talking about engineering design, they were talking about design as the whole for that particular project. So then at the university level, they have two like two units being developed, but this unit actually has been existed for quite some time. But it's just like they are also looking for a way to encourage this innovation and entrepreneurship. One of it is called the University of Malaya Center for Innovation and Commercialization. So remember, I, 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 in, in, in my previous uh, slides, I said one of the things that hinder us from doing innovation in uh, entrepreneurship is about money. So this unit has come up with some good effort to actually like try to find as much money for us in the university to start up our business and you know, to at least encourage people to have idea and innovation. So there's a lot of list of grants and with all the criteria of how you can apply those grants and stuff. The, the hard part is we have to write the proposal in a good way. So, okay. so but at least we have now money. We have we have source of money. Okay. And then like uh, they also encourage like these are the spin-off companies that come out from our universities. Okay, so this company started from the, okay, these are, most of it started from the Faculty of Engineering. Okay, I'm going to show you the very one of this company because I think it's a bit different from other companies. Because most 
of the other company, most of engineering company, they were actually providing services. They didn't actually provide, they didn't actually start as an idea. They actually start as a service provider. Okay? So, but for this particular company, I think Mazia has maybe have known this guy, the old one, or this so small. Okay. His name, he, he actually like started this uh, company. His name is from Vicky. He's a neurosurgeon. Uh, this, this story might be not the whole truth, but the essence is he started this company when he got this idea, okay, when he's at home with his wife, he got two main ideas for this company. The first thing, he's a neurosurgeon. Okay. So, but he cannot be in a hospital for 24 hours, right? Because some of his junior surgeons have to do all the surgery things. Okay. But sometimes, he kept getting all these calls during the night when this junior surgeon cannot do, and then he has to explain in the phone and something. So it's very difficult for him. And it's very like, you know, causing the life. We are talking about the life of the patient on the surgery bed, right? You cannot just tell via the phone and without doing anything. So he, he called a bunch of like engineers and uh, some doctors to involve with him. He said, well, how we can provide a solution and save more lives? That. So it comes from a tele, uh, medicine and so on. So he can view the real, uh, a real video or something during the operations happen. The second part is much more like this is what they, they innovate because they have a bunch of people with multiple backgrounds. They have doctors, they have engineers, and some other players, they have businessmen and so on. So they were thinking it's like uh, most of the time the doctors have to guess where, okay, first, well, you have the tumor in your head. You just trust, like, the, 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 the x-ray or the, the image that you scan these patients. So, is it correct? Is it the place is, you know? Because if they can precisely target the tumor area as precise as possible, they are going to reduce the cut for that surgery. So, they, they use the tools which is the 3D printer, to actually print the patient's head. They scan the patient's head and they print the patient's head. So they try to do all the surgery before, prior to the actual surgery. So this is what the company like, pro, uh, like provide. So they are not like as the usual company where they just provide service to other people, but they actually like come up with the idea. Okay. Then the second unit that we have in the university is the University of Malaya Entrepreneurship Center. Okay, so this center actually provides uh, entrepreneurial labs, the business opportunities, workshops, student organization, graduate program competitions. Okay. So this is another way, this is quite new. This, this unit is quite new. So this is another way on how our university try to encourage people to become an entrepreneur. Right. So what do we think? We think you are not that advanced stage in that innovations and entrepreneurship, but we think that we are making small incremental steps. We hope that's in the right direction, that hope this can make a big difference. But, and we are still validating about grading or not grading this type of subject, this type of courses, design or innovation courses. We are still looking for a solution, how to make one brain that have two minds innovators and also entrepreneurs. We're still looking for that. And we're still looking for the optimal solution for different layer of people. This is what I want to answer. I think what one student was asking when you are like which type of participants, right? I think you should take the first type of participants. Because you uh, we have to create another program for the second type of participants. So there must be a different type of for example age program. They must if not, we are going to give a negative energy to the first one. We are going to kill that first. That's what, that is the reality. Because for us, in order for us, one to our students innovate and become an entrepreneur, we have to tackle the lecturers first. We have to tackle these mind, these professors. Yes, they are professors. <laughs> Who just say, okay, I come to work. 
from 8.35 to 3.50 and do some research, research, write some paper and then I go home. Right. Yeah, we do have that type of like, stuff. Like, that's, that's the reality. I think you find this. I don't know, but that's why I'm calling my faculty. <laughs> Alright, okay. So, so we are still trying to find the most optimal solution. How we can tackle these every layers of people. So then we think we can yeah, but hopefully we can proceed with that. That maybe we can I can ask all the my colleagues from other faculty on how they take on this thing. Right? Okay. So I'd like to acknowledge my team and so on. Okay. So uh, this is actually when yeah, you came to Malaysia. I was not there. Supposed to be like Dr. Norima who come, but she's delivering because she just delivered her baby, so she cannot come. So I'm replacing her. Right. And yeah, and I got a lot of friends here. Alright, so thank you. Okay, any question from the floor? Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, you first said that when um when you first introduced the uh, what was it the innovation workshop, um there were only twenty students. Uh, there's two things. Uh, one is the bachelor degree program. Uh -huh. It's a very specific program for designs and stuff. The other one is the workshop. It's a voluntary basis. So which one you are referring? To? Well, maybe both. Um, I'm, I'm like I was trying to ask you that. Um, after you um come up with a solution, right? Um, you, I'm sorry to do the begin. Uh, yes, yes, for the students. Yes. yes. Um, did your um well design um course students. Uh, 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 increase. Increase the uh, number of students. Okay, so that begin challenge we we actually conducted for conduct for um, form four. It's a sixteen years old student, so they haven't entered the university yet. So, but <laughs> yeah, but we we are we are looking some some improvement in terms of the number of enrollment now. We we can see, but it's not. We still have to do much more work to actually like go out in the entire nation and tell that this is good. But it's increasing, but it's not like a very hard, yeah. I'm um, like, you're facing the same situation which is in our college. I'm like, in our in KO University, uh, many students don't see any benefits in those kind oh, of uh, I don't know. Like, classes. So. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> you're from science. Yes, I am, I'm, in, I'm from the science and technology oh, okay. faculty in KO oh, University, oh, okay. but the same situation oh. is happening right here. So I, I, I really, I'm like, I have a question that doesn't necessarily mean that it's about me, but let's just say you're a student, a PhD student, and you develop a kind of machine that you think is awesome. However, your professors or your supervisors do not think so, but you want to proceed forward, but Money is always an issue in entrepreneurship. So how do you advise this kind of students to go forward in their design? Okay. Are you talking, are you referring to our university? Because I'm the same university as Manzia. So are you, are you referring to our universities? Or you are going to, you want to ask me and the, the overall... General? The general. general. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, like, okay, I, I can tell you one story, okay? This student, he's not even master or PhD. This student is an undergraduate student. He actually proposed a very brilliant idea for this bad sensor, right? And yeah, he proposed a modular and some stuff. And he proposed that to the professors who is his supervisors. Okay? And then these professors say, no, this is a not, no, all technically done, blah, 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 okay? It's not very, like, supportive things. But the good thing about this student, he's very stubborn. Then he do some prototyping, and then he do some like experimental and show it in front of the professor. And he also like the, uh, he he he, think, he was thinking creatively. I think at that time because he's a bit stubborn, which is good things. He even like called some colleagues from like some from France and some some doctors. For example, like we are very engineers, we are designing for the doctors. And he showed that, like, he invited even his supervisor and showed that. And then when this, like, other audience beside his supervisor said, wow, there's a very good solution, there's a good idea, then his supervisor said, oh, yes, 
I'm the one who actually helped. <laughs> that's that's it's, it's really true. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> but, and and they, they went for pattern and everything, and the supervisor become like, oh, okay, God, he's she, he or she, but he's a she. <laughs> So, faculties like me, we don't know everything. Very well. So, it's, if it is your rigor, if it is inside you, just go. go so, on. you're telling me I have to go out. You have to be stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> That's the word. Can I quote that to certain people in my university? Oh my <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, stubborn is the word, yeah? Thank you very much. Or it's called entrepreneurship. <laughs> professional word, yes. Right. Thank you very much, Kate. Alright, okay. thank you, Matt. Okay, last but not the least, of course, we call it Team Chula. <laughs>
try again. That wasn't so hard. Okay, that's the university. And we are teaching this new program. Actually, it's almost 10 years now. Um, uh, the program called Technopreneurship, meaning technology and entrepreneurship together, and innovation management. And this is for um, graduate levels with, uh, who have full-time job, most of them. Yeah. Uh, to talk about myself a bit later to um, TCGC program, um, actually Thailand has established design school for many, many years. And there are so many approach we have in design, doing design. At Tulane, that we don't just work as artists. So we adapt human-centered design approach and teach there for quite a long time. Actually, I went to the United States and have learned from professor from uh, IDOs, and we know human centered designs like 17 years ago. Yeah, before the word design thinking is coined and published on um, how is business review. So, joining this program is a challenge for me too because uh, it's the program that tries to link many things together. The program is called, um, well, PIP program in the middle that link to university research, which we have many, many faculties. They, they are expert in many different fields from engineering, medical school, science, and these all have individual lab, yeah? And these academic advisor would help the TIP students um, work with industry to develop new concepts and get funded, and then start the innovation um, launching. Okay, that's the mission. The mission of the program is to bring <coughs> technology and know-how from Jilalong Bon to the public, and also provide qualified human resources in the innovation area. Okay, uh, at the beginning, there's only five faculties joining and we teach different kind of things, different approach. And today we have all the um, advisors from many, many faculties in Jula, and the student can choose to work with many professors at one time. And we offer three programs for master's and PhD. About, we have about two, uh, 200 alumni right now. Okay. And this is the call cost. We, oops. Okay, these are the uh, five call courses. Uh, I teach product plan planning and development. And should be their call uh, for everyone to learn. First is product planning and development, and there's front end of the process, starting from activity identification, which apply very similar approach as we experience here, design thinking. Also, uh, there are some important part in this innovation process that we have specific uh, class teaching for creative thinking, for entrepreneurship and commercialization. And also we have classes teaching the whole thing, like uh, have case studies and stuff to practice and learn what has been done in this area called innovation synthesis. So this is um, 
the foundation for everyone to take and then later that they can choose whatever they're interested in. Some of them come from um, engineering school, may, they may go back and apply this, what they learn in, in that area and make innovation happen. And this is some uh, success case. So before I tell you a little bit more about it, you know, I mean, I'll call this as a case study for our student. I'll touch upon a little bit on the history of the program. Because the reason that we call it technopreneurship is that we try to drive the technology or the research that we have on the shelf. Because what the program that we had at the beginning that is very difficult to get the engineer and scientists to talk to the market. We claim that they talk in different language. So well, that's why we try to be the middle persons. We are trying to bridge the gap there. So we try to produce what we claim as the innovators. So we believe that when you talk about innovation, it doesn't mean there's only one disciplinary. So that's why we start with the multi-disciplinary. We have like different faculty. And you will hear more from Professor Freiman afterward. That's one of the pain points. It's OK. I'll leave that. So this is just one of our success case story for our students. Because as we know that we have a postgrad student is still working. So that actually one of the benefits that we have. Why is that? They're working, they see the problem, they see the need. So some of the project I claim as a like basic dissertation is actually moving forward to the exploitation. So the ladies on the left hand side on the screen, the one that wearing the spectacles. She's actually a uh, development of the software. She's from the very big insurance company in Thailand, right? She, she saw the problem that when there is any accident, what happened? It's very time consuming, right? It's caused all the difficulty. So she developed one of the software that to address all that trouble. So anyway, cut the story short. So once she developed all that, she managed to communicate with the user. So at the end of the whole project, as the university, we manage to license our, you know, I mean, we claim as the software that <coughs> to the industry. So it's the actual case to go all the way through the beginning, as Professor Brian showed you before, like, you know, I mean, the idea generations all the way to the exploitation. Right, I think this is, here's another guy that very interesting in the case that he doesn't have any background in the science but he worked in the industry to do with some of the electronic stuff. He know that it's a problem that, that, you know, I mean, to package some of the electronic device, there is an anti-static properties that cause all the problem. So he start by, you know, use the facility that we have. When I say the facility, the first thing I meant is the resource of the, of the lecturers, the researcher at the university, because for the multidisciplinary, but we have to work very hard in the work with them to be able to combine everything together. So at the end of the, like, his uh, study, he managed to talk some things about, you know, with the science, which he hasn't had any background. His background is actually in the business. So up until now, after he developed all his project, he managed to get the patents. Right now, he's about to establish the new company for that. So that is the second success case that we have, and, you know, just the example, actually. <laughs> so this is just some example of the activities we have uh, research, ex exchange, and field trip, and we visit um, different universities around the world and discuss about the innovation um, process, I mean helping people to apply innovation in their in innovative thinking in their real life practice. <coughs> Okay, and we have special talks uh, sometimes, and uh, also we call it tips forum. Every three or four weeks, we will have the forum, and we invite someone interesting to talk talk about their success project and share the experience to the student and inspire them to start doing something new. This is some uh, picture showing environment at. Uh, the U university, and we promise we will talk about pain point or lesson learned. Mm. The first one is multidisciplinary approach, which is 
kind of new and hard to, to manage. Because there's many professors, very senior professors come from different school and they have that own mindset. And they look at innovation in different way, different approach, believe in different kind of things. Yeah. But we think this is a good thing. We don't think that everybody has to like um, follow just step by step design thinking uh, approach. Some of them, and maybe a lot of the business in Thailand, they have technology, or even our university, we have know-how and technology on the shelf. That's a lot, like thousands of technology waiting to be developed and uh, wait for someone to find a need and match with this technology. So start out with design thinking is one way and we see this something what we can do and how do we work together in different approach. For example, if you have one technology you want to use, one new material, there's one student say, come to me and say, oh, this is a biodegradable material I develop and I want to make it useful for the world, you know. So it's not starting from looking for just what people want, what the unmet needs, sometimes it comes from like um, what you have and you have to apply design thinking around it and what's the way to do that. Well, we have a lot to, well, if we have more time, I can discuss about that. And to share, have the share mindset is a very difficult part and I'm not sure if uh, we should be more open-minded or we should like try to have the same mindset and this still uh, ongoing discussion. Another thing is um, in this program, we both have, uh, we start from uh, academic people, right, uh, to conduct all the lecture and research and also workshops. And later on, we found that inviting practitioner to teach is a very good way and we try to help help them teach well because sometimes you can be a very good uh, entrepreneur or um, you are a great innovator but you don't know how to teach people and that's hard like you show example but people cannot do what you do so this is the um, issue as well to find a balance of help these to become one or let academic practice or practice practitioner uh, get used to academic environment. Um, you want to discuss another two? Okay, I'll, I'll just, just touch up on very briefly on the other two points. Another point that we have because we claim as the part-time course, so it means that we study, let's say, over the weekend. But normally when you talk about the office hour, we're talking about like Monday to Friday, right? So I think that's probably part of the communications. When we touch upon the communications, the communication from the student to the administrative work. The communications among the professor. The communications between professor and the student. So as I highlighted earlier, multidisciplinary can give you a very, you know, I mean, what should I say? great advantage at the same time it will cost you a big problem as well if you don't know how to handle it and manage it well so that's what we still kind of you know figure out what's going to be the best solution to do that okay i would love to hear any comment on these things from other colleagues i think the last part that we see as the benefit because we claim that we actually offer for the prospect student so we have like a master level and we have like the doctoral level and right now, believe it or not, we have more number for the PhD candidate than the master's student. Which is very unusual, right? You think that when you talk about the PhD, something that very, very deep, you probably get a very small number of the uh, uh, participants. But PhD become very popular in Thailand for some certain reason. Some really like to learn. Some just want to get like DR in front of your name, yeah. right? I think that's probably, you know, I mean, it's kind of help you to lift up the ranking. 
this sort of thing. So we get a lot of PhD candidates at the moment. And some of them in a very, very high you know, position in the company. So that is one of the great benefits. Because when we want to communicate the term of innovation, even though I mentioned to you earlier that the first term, we kind of focus on the technology base, try to push that to the market. But once the cost running, we think that, hey, that's probably the only one of the objectives. Because if you want someone to do innovations, the policy doesn't support that. That's probably the you know, only address to the patients earlier that they were willing to do that. But it's a certain obstacle that you could not pursue all the way through. So we do have a high ranking, you know, positions in the company come and study in our course. So that's make it much easier in the term of disseminations, try to drive the innovations forward. So we claim that as you know, I mean Clearly, what do we have? That we have like high rankings. We put down there like a middle level man managers, right? Because the course since is a like a past time course, so the fee is quite high. So that's probably one of the you know reasons why we still have kind of the limited candidate. I think that's probably about all for the time being. So any questions would be more than welcome. Thank you. Uh, it's a nice uh, presentation. Uh, so, I'm very interested in the program, which like there's a cool name like technopreneurship. So I'm thinking then. So is this kind of technopreneurship is for those who they are engineers but they need to run the business, or maybe like uh, for those who need to implement the technology to their business. Is it work vice versa or something? And then I'm thinking, is everyone here who want to be the entrepreneur also need to be a technopreneur or something? Maybe you can enlighten us with the perspective. Because, yeah, back in my country, maybe this technopreneurship is just a course, not introduced as a program. So then, yeah, I don't see this kind of anywhere in our classes, right? Yeah, please enlighten us. <laughs> Can I just come back to the questions a little bit? That you said, how's the technopreneurship term, right, cover our core structure or what? Yeah, I mean, uh, in a simple case, so what this kind of technopreneurship suits for uh, into kind of person? I mean, like, is this for engineer who need to run their business, or is so for anyone who need to implement the technology? Their, uh, for running the business? The initiative idea at the beginning when we started our program is tend to be on the first statement that we claim. Because Professor Prima mentions earlier that, you know, I mean, at that time we had so many research on the shelf. So it's this kind of we driving all the technologies to the user. That's probably the beginning. But after we conducting the program for like, you know, a few years, and when we gather the people from the different disciplinary, we see that, hey, that's probably the only direction that we should move forward. So it's kind of, you know, I mean, a combined idea afterwards that we kind of open up to either you have, you are the engineer or the scientist, you want to move forward to the market, you're welcome. Or some people, as Professor Primar mentioned earlier, some of the project is come from like, okay, I'm from the market. I need some technology to support that. I'm not sure whether, you know, I mean, the answer that I provide you address your, you know, curiosity, but it seems to be like mixed at the moment. It depends on what is your domain, what is your background, how would you like to move forward? Because if you see from the slide earlier, you probably see that we try to claim that we have all the members from all the faculties in the university. So any approach, you just come and discuss with us, and then we try to find a proper solution for that particular candidate. Do I address your questions? If not, we can talk later. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I think you still have, you know, puzzle. Yeah. Okay. 
Unless Professor Fema would like to add anything. Nothing much. I just think the first time I joined the program, I had problem with the word, the word techno and entrepreneurship. I keep asking, does it have to be technology? It's because I'm so much into design thinking. Back then, we didn't call it design thinking. We call it a human center approach. So um, when we have discussion, it's like oh, go with many many directions and. Uh, making others believe in the approach is not easy, so we need some time to show them how things work. I think it's been around seven to nine years, and I start seeing some of my students doing something real in the market. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the answer. Okay. Thank you very much. And one, one last thing, you never introduce yourself to the audience. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yes, please. Well, probably going to be my last email from Thailand. Okay. I'm a, actually, I'm a lecturer at the Faculty of Science. But this course is seem to be like an additional course. So you see that we started our course by drawing of the faculty member from different faculties. You don't have a permanent faculty member for this program. So it is like you work like for two places. My background is science, polymer science, material stuff. And another's background is I'm also got the law degree. So I'm working on intellectual property. Give a job for that. Okay, thanks. And my name is Prima. And I'm from uh, architectural faculty, and uh, I'm teaching industrial design, which is, a, which, which is just one department in that school. And even that, I still have to talk to other professor in the same department about this approach. So there are so many approach besides design thinking. Yeah, it's challenging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and for my degree, I graduated from Jula for undergrad and I went to Cornell University to um, study design and also did PhD in Chicago at the Institute of Design, um, IIT, which is the same school as Simona Maski visit. Uh, she found CIID in Copenhagen. Yeah, yeah you show the school yesterday and also my professor, one of my professors wrote a book you show, uh, 101 Design about VJ Kuma. So I'm so much into it since 15 years ago and it's very hard just like uh, people from TCDC's experience promoting the things is hard and like, okay, I'll share about it later. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Maybe you can try to ask the same question to several different people. That's that's fine. 
Um, if you want, if you have more questions to ask, please do so, and we're more than, more than happy to answer the questions as a team. So I'm now opening to the to the floor. Do you have any more questions? Yes, of course. You do. <laughs> so uh, this is a question for all the for all the schools. A couple of months ago, there was a quick workshop from MIT about design fictions. Yeah, so there is a group of people, crazy people in Europe, that are working on a speculative design. That they are thinking in the future of design that is very heavy and is very critical because they have nothing else to do. They, have, they don't have needs, so they are just thinking ahead. So they did a panel, a discussion panel, that was between a professor from Pakistan and a professor from uh, uh, UK, from London. And they asked, is it worth it? Design fiction, when you really, when you have real needs to solve? So the guy from Pakistan said, no. We need real needs to solve, so why we need to think in the future? And the guy from UK said, yes, we need it. Because why do you get stuck in the present when you have the chance to start thinking in the future? So I bring the question to you guys. Who wants to go first? That's a really nice question. And uh, I, I'll talk about the perspective of one, which is very close to Indian perspective. So, uh, space research and space uh, exploration, there are three space people over here. And there is a perspective which is very different that is of Indian perspectives compared to others. Uh, the perspective is this, that if you are doing any kind of research back in India, which is not going to directly or indirectly assist the, the local population, you don't do that research, number one. Number two, the moment you don't do that research, you know, there are so many latent, uncalculatable, unthinkable solutions that you might be able to find which you never find. Right? So, uh, just to give an example, uh, we were discussing the Indian uh, mission to Mars was 7 rupees a kilometer. That's like 14 yen a kilometer. I don't know what is the cost of taxi or cab in, in, in Japan. But it is less than what an auto would charge in Amdabha. Uh, so, there is a big frugalness drive to achieve something which is very out of the world. But the perspective is again, uh, is it going to create value for the problems that are in front of you? So, that's, there is a balance that we, you need to create between both. That is, that's, that's what people back home really think. Anybody? Okay. So, let me, this is my perspective, but we tend to fight with known unknowns, right, which is the, the clear need. But what we really need to find and fight is unknown unknowns, something we don't know that we don't know. This is very typical for, you know, space exploration too. And the three space guys is me, him, and him. We're all space engineers. So, it's it's, 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 you know, sometimes it's somebody's job to find that unknown unknown. So, I don't know, you know, maybe that's my take on that, whatever you brought up. That somebody, there must be somebody who's trying to find that unknown unknown. So that people say, hey, that, that's also important. That we never thought about. You know, so that's, that's my take on, on this end. That should we think about something we... That something so irrelevant that so it seems now, right? But and another thing is, where is the boundary between now and future? It's right, like you know, when when you talk about space, I mean, time is like hundred years is nothing, but for human, hundred years seems to be a lot. So it's it's very difficult to find. You know, what, what's the boundary between now and the future and like almost the past? So, yeah, so I, I would say, there, yes, yes, I agree that there will be some group of people trying to find unknown numbers. That's my take. Yeah. Should we go to the next question? Okay, yes, please. 
my question is um we're talking about um, the design thinking and system thinking um, uh, to be to become innovative or to become in, in the, to be a kind of entrepreneur um, and we have a lot of problems how to teach um, those kind of things to students and that as well as um, um, people who work for companies. Um, do you use um, design thinking and system thinking to create your own curriculum? Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, very good question. Well, let me start. Um, yes, we do. I can give you a great example. The meeting we had on the first day we met, we weren't on the seats. I mean, we weren't sitting. We were kind of standing, drinking coffee, and chatting. So, and then we came to the conclusion, hey, this is far more constructive than just sitting and trying to have a meeting. We were standing and you know, chatting and then discussing what should be on the presentation. So I think that that was an attitude of design thinking. It's open-minded. It's, uh, it's you know, jumping on top of each other. So I think we were practicing that. And for system thinking, and of course these two are just, you know, this highlights of that it could be applied to the innovation development. And there's so many other things, just like uh, Chula team explained. So, and for, from my perspective, system thinking, of course we use that. You saw the structure of the, 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 the course. We think um, of our uh, course from different viewpoint and try to make it happen. So I think that's a very practical application of, of system thinking and design thinking. And so for, for your sake in the future, so no theory comes as it is in the field. Theory comes in very different um, looking in the field, and I, I really do think so. So it doesn't, it may not look like design thinking or system thinking or whatever theory that you um, you know, but I think in the field it, it merges together, and it, 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 I think there there it is. I guess. Yeah. So that's my thing. Any any other? I mean, any your example of? So the question is, are you using whatever you're teaching? I, I yes. just just remember what you said in the in the afternoon today. To uh, to make you uh, feel and understand creativity. There is a lot of logical thought process, a lot of creative thinking that goes behind to structure it so that you can understand unstructured way of doing things. Right? We had discussion just, just, just. So it, yeah, that's, that is a lot of. Let me, let me introduce you the, the other way. So te to teach, to make the workshop creative, we plan the workshop very systematic. So we plan our, uh, the, the workshop and structure very systematic, very logical way so that you can be creative in the workshop. So I said, you know, if you want to eat the creative food, you don't cook creative. You cook logically and then you eat the creative food. If you try to cook creative, your food tastes <laughs> weird. Yes. So that's how I put it in just this afternoon. Yes. Thank you. Can I add a bit? I think, well, I teach at July and sometimes I help TCDC um, conduct workshop and teach too. And at TCDC, they send some students or their employees to sit in the class mm -hmm. and sometimes talk to the student and they would give us comments. Like, every time, like, oh, you use many English words in this workshop, people don't understand or you should have more case study, whatever, so they would get, give us feedback at all times. So we keep developing their, um, the course and the workshop, even within that train project from day one to day seven, to be very different approach of teaching could be. And also the course class at Jula, we um, talk to the student, and also the friend of the student and see what's going on, what they understand and not, and we keep adjusting it every every semester. Yeah. I just just want to add one more thing. Uh, sorry, I'm a little talkative. So <laughs> <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I we conducted a workshop very recently. I, I sent photographs of this to the 
it was 100 people and it was regarding entrepreneurial gateway for me was and the, the three sessions of the workshop were why entrepreneurship, what entrepreneurship and how entrepreneurship probably that is what you were going to say why, what and how right so it's it's actually what you're studying right it, it, is, it is a part of the course and that is how it is being done okay alright so let's move on to the next question maybe one or two more yes let's go there Okay, go ahead. Yes, please. Uh, how do you measure or define the success of their program mm -hmm. in each school? Okay, let's, do you want to hear, let's, okay, let's hear from all of you. How do you measure your success or how do you, maybe we already had that discussion, but maybe can you refer, maybe quick reference to how you validate, how you measure your success of the program? Measuring of, yeah. Measuring, yes. <laughs> you can use a lot of tools. Uh, the easiest way, and not the easiest way, the one that physically you can uh, see. For example, like how many, like at the end, for example, in designing or innovating something, I'm talking in terms of the engineering, we're talking about how many patent applications are being applied by the students. And uh, if you are measuring about entrepreneurship, maybe how they start up company that being created by the student. It's like all these are quantitative way on how you can actually measure. But I think it can go further than that. It's not only in terms of like after you just graduate and you see the, the just immediate product after that. But a, a, a longer vision, a, long, a, a bigger vision, like maybe at, after five years you're actually creating a society or community that doesn't have any barrier about innovation and entrepreneurship. But for you to arrive at that point is quite far. It's not that you, can, you cannot get it within one or two years. You might get it in five or ten years. So maybe later on, like, like I think one of your colleagues was asking, like what happened after we did the begin challenge to the school student? Does the enrollment for these uh, design courses uh, in, improve or increase? We can't say that now because it just has happened like one year ago, but maybe we are going to see it. Within five years and ten years, like this is going to be the, the very popular courses and so on. So yeah. About measuring, that's a big question actually. <laughs> okay. Two people, maybe quick answers. Yeah. <laughs> right. Actually, it's very interesting questions because we have thought about that also. We've been running the program for 10 years. So up until now, we haven't done any official validation. So what we did, it probably the first thing that very easy for us to investigate is the number of the applicants. Because as you know that you have to pay to enroll into this program. And it's quite, you know, I mean, the fee is quite hard. So that's one other thing. Another thing that we're talking to the industry, because we, you know, we assume that they're actually using our product. Sorry to paint it that way. So that's, you know, I mean, how it is encourage their employees to come and study with us. That's probably another indication that we use, right? Apart from that, what we have done, you probably see, like, you know, I mean, some of the research that we have done, whether it has been utilized, either in terms of, you know, commercialization, when you talk about the commercialization, you probably talk more about the money. But some of the projects is actually served more like the social uh, area, this sort of thing. I think up until now, I think the, those are like, the, you know, I mean, three key factors that we use. Anyone, anything from, yeah, what did you say? Okay, for ITV, we, we just, this is the second year, so we don't still have any credit. But for other program, you soon we uh, call again the alumni, and then we check, because we have a aim, right? After that, what, what the student become, then we check the alumni after already five years, and then they can get to the campus. Is it for the correct or not? Is it like that? If, uh, we plan to be entrepreneur by the next five years they become the employee, that's something wrong. 
but at least the point we try to get the innovative or entrepreneurial mindset is the important reason to check. Just add on a little bit more because when we actually recruit uh, the newcomers to our program, we do interview them and ask them whether they get to know our program. Because I think one of another indications that we take into account is just like if you know the grad grad student, the one that already completed their study, recommend. I think that's probably another indication too. Uh, I would like to talk. In my personal point of view about the success of the, not, not, not about program, but about individual workshop. Because I have explained about playing some, a lot of people, miss of people, a lot of nature of age, but it's about 50 years old. After finishing the workshop, this, she still be at the, at the end of the workshop, and she came to me, I love it, I like it. And it's one of the success of my personal level. And the second one is, after finishing the workshop, let's say 100, percent of people, at least seventy percent they still be in the workshop. I think it's quite success. That 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 means that hey we can facilitate or we provide that some tools, some mindset to to their mind to to do to their mind and brain kind of that. Mm -hmm. And another one is it depends on which kind of workshop or program you, you design for example. I I have with my partner in in providing training in brand, brand design. The first, let's say, entrepreneur, he has a lot of idea. Let's say, his dream, a lot of dream. When he came to us with some approach, some tool set, they change their mind. Hey, I have not just started my consumer. This is what I have dreamed by myself. And then they share my set, they share methodology, they share the way they do business or thinking about their business. This, I think, is a, like a qualitative success, yeah. Okay, let's, let's say this is a last okay. question. Okay. Uh, it's just, um, I, was th I was thinking about all the recruitment, like that, the problem of recruitment. And I was just thinking that most of the uh, entrepreneurship families like, succeed in uh, um, like getting their kids mm. to go to entrepreneurship world. Because I think that maybe they encourage their kids since they are very little to do this. So maybe what if uh, we start to teach some of the tools, of course, design thinking for kids and system blah 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 for kids, but we like just like plant the seed before. Because I wish that my parents did it with me. Probably I have like three or four business right now. <laughs> Successful. Yeah. So maybe there is there is a chance of the universities to do a, like a kid or a junior program to start this before. Maybe. Maybe last year. Yeah, I do very much agree with you. Okay, I spent four years in Australia. They got one. Uh, like it's not a, it's a kids, it's a program for kids. It's a high five, it's called high five. I think some of us may have heard it. You know that they actually they actually have trained they are trained their kids or their little ones to actually see the moon the bear moonwalking. Yeah, what is it the bear doing moon? <laughs> yes. Yeah, they actually have teach. In in direct way, like for example, it's one slot in every single session for that program. There's a, a storytelling, and at the end, they will ask, "Did you see this thing there?" You know, and these kids will train. They were like, "Oh, okay." Like maybe once, twice, you you watch that place, you didn't realize. But on the third, fourth, and if you watch it every day, you will like, look for everything inside that. So they actually train. Like I think that's when. Well, that's a good, that's a really good idea. So it's like we have to actually not only design in terms of curriculum and so on, we have to actually design whatever like entertainment that we have, even like from the beginning. So we actually can create this innovative thinking, design thinking, and entrepreneurship and so on. So I very much agree with that. <laughs> Any other comments? Yeah. 
I think in the, 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 there's a world trend of happening because, of course, IDEO is working to K through 12 education. IDEO is pro providing, Stanford is moving towards that. And there's a, go check up YouTube, System Thinking and Kids. You'll see a kid talking about how can he stop this, um, the, the causal loop of him, his, I don't know, the kids fighting or something. And he <laughs> talk, seriously, he talks about leverage points. It's amazing. It's amazing to see that video. So go online, you'll find it. It's amazing. So it can be taught, probably. And I think this challenge is going on right now in the world. And I think as a KO group, we're trying, because we have a franchise of high schools and elementary <laughs> schools. So we're planning. And we have done some in high schools. But teaching to high school students is a oh, new pain. <laughs> Very different. Because like you know, some of the slides say, you need to be aware of the aware of the issue. You need to you need to have a some you know motivation to learn something like this. So maybe younger kids are easier because you can just you know give it to them. They'll, they'll love it any anyway, right? Yeah, high they school don't students. Have too many bias. Right, yes. high school yes. students are very tough. <laughs> We've tried and suffered, and but you know we're getting used to it. So, but there's a big trend happening. So definitely, there's a. I think there will be another um, improvement or the expansion in this field. Yeah. Thank you, friends. Okay, so we're right on time, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so at the very end, we're gonna have Seiko talk about the closing the the sep, you know this day with a 30-minute talk. We left. I don't know one hour talk. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for attending this uh, GIF. So, I was not imagine, I did not imagine so exciting discussion through the presentation. <laughs> but the, so we we really struggle for develop the uh, this kind of the uh, education program. So. We are really agree to your activity and your uh, feelings through the activity, your activity. So I hope we collaborate together, but and the, not only for between us, but also expand our activity through the maybe not only the Asian, but also the other countries. So of course we are collaboration with the uh, Stanford, MIT, Art University, but still. As Kay mentioned, there is a difference in the base between the countries. So maybe we collaborate, but we have to change the uh, their other guys' uh, knowledge and experience into our own culture basis. So thank you very much for your attendance, and uh, I hope that we can come here or somewhere together in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, we want to take group photo. So everybody come to Okay, please come from in front. Group picture. Group picture. Do you want this in the back or <laughs> yes, yes. Right. looks nice. So everybody yes.